Molly Pitcher, Paul Revere, and Nathan Hale are among the many Revolutionary War heroes, some of whom are near mythological beings. Many others, whose sacrifices and contributions contributed significantly to American independence, are mostly forgotten by history, at least by most Americans. But the revolution would not have been won if not for 10 heroes of the American nation. Stick till the end of the video to find out who they are. Hello, and welcome to History Fun Facts, where we present some of the most amazing facts you might not have heard. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you won't miss future updates. Without further ado, let's get straight into this. Number 10. Abraham Whipple Abraham Whipple taught himself advanced mathematics and navigational skills despite his lack of formal education. He earned a reputation as an honest businessman and a good mariner as a seafarer in colonial Rhode Island. During the French and Indian War, he amassed a personal fortune as a commercial seaman and privateer. Whipple, who sided with the Patriots early in the 1770s during the difficulties with Great Britain, captured the British revenue cutter Gatsby, one of the first acts of American disobedience against the Crown. When the Revolutionary War broke out in 1775, Whipple was in command of two ships under the leadership of Rhode Island rebel commanders. After transferring critical ammunition from Bermuda to Philadelphia, the Continental Congress seized his ships, allocating them to the newly established Continental Navy, and appointed Whipple as its first captain. Over the next five years, he operated in various ships, capturing or destroying more British ships than any other Continental Navy officer, including the considerably more famous John Paul Jones. When the city of Charleston fell to the British in 1780, Whipple was captured on shore. Number 9. John Stark During the French and Indian War, John Stark served with the illustrious Rogers Rangers, where he formed a lifelong dislike for the British Army's gentlemen leaders. Following reports of the action at Lexington and Concord, Stark rejoined the militia as a colonel, leading the 1st New Hampshire Regiment on April 23, 1775. Stark and his regiment encircled Boston with the Continental Army by early June. At Bunker Hill, Stark led his men with distinction, providing rearguard fighting when the Americans were forced to flee. Following that, he took part in the Siege of Boston, the disastrous invasion of Canada, and the battles of Trenton and Princeton. He returned to New Hampshire to help Washington's army recruit more men. He resigned his service after encountering political maneuvers concerning promotion. His service, however, wasn't yet complete. During the crucial victory at the Battle of Bennington, Stark led the American men. The British were forced to halt their march in the New York woods after defeating Bergeon's Hessian forces. After the war, Stark stayed active with the American Northern Army until he retired to his New Hampshire farm in relative obscurity. Number 8. Thomas Sumpner Mel Gibson plays Benjamin Martin, an American planter and guerrilla fighter in the 2000 film The Patriot who is reported to be partially molded on Francis Marion, South Carolina's famed Swamp Fox. The character also follows the exploits of Thomas Sumpner. A lesser-known South Carolina guerrilla soldier nicknamed the Carolina Gamecock by his men and adversaries. Like the fictional Martin, Sumner possessed property in the High Santee that was burned by the British and commanded irregulars in a campaign against the British and nearly lost his leadership. Sumner gained the nickname after defeating British Colonel Bannistry Tarleton's troops at the Battle of Blackstock's Farm. Lord Cornwallis, Tarleton's supervisor, reported that the Americans fought like a gamecock. The skirmish was a minor one, one of several harassing assaults carried out by the Americans in the Carolinas to disrupt British communications and supply lines. He was one of those men with the personality that allowed him to alienate even his closest friends which may explain why his fame, while great during his lifetime, didn't continue long after his death. He outlived all previous American Revolutionary War generals, dying in 1832. Fort Sumner, the site of the American Civil War's first shots, was named after him. Solomon was born in Poland in 1740 to a Sephardic Jewish family. Before migrating to England, he became well-versed in European finance and learned to speak and write numerous languages including German and French. Solomon moved to New York in 1775 to work as a financial broker in the mercantile trade. In New York, he discovered that the Sons of Liberty were his sympathizers. He didn't command troops, fight in battles, or write impassioned documents supporting the cause during the conflict. His bravery was much more understated. Solomon took advantage of his position to persuade the German forces to the desert. He was apprehended, convicted, and condemned to death once more. 
he managed to flee Philadelphia where he set up shop as a broker, assisting in raising finances for the Continental Army. Solomon was so successful that he could generate the equivalent of $16 million in today's dollars for the Revolutionary War effort. During the conflict, Solomon used his personal riches to buy hundreds of thousands of dollars. The loan was worth less than 10 cents on the dollar after the war, and he died impoverished in Philadelphia in 1785 at the age of 44. Number 6. Seth Warner The Hampshire Grants were the name given to the area now Vermont during the late colonial period. Residents of the area, which both New York and New Hampshire claimed, preferred the concept of independence from either province. Under the leadership of Ethan Allen and Seth Warner, the Green Mountain Boys were created to fight authorities, notably those in New York. Both were imposing men in their day, towering over six feet tall, and both were well-known, or infamous depending on one's point of view, in their communities. After the war, Warner's influence in Vermont waned as Allen entered politics and grew to control the region's affairs. He died in 1784 at the age of 41. His several campaigns damaged his health. Ethan Allen's contributions to the American Revolution have been eclipsed since his death, and Seth Warner is largely unknown outside of Vermont. Number 5. John Barry Like Abraham Whipple, John Barry's contributions to the Patriot cause during the American Revolution are eclipsed by the more well-known John Paul Jones, who served under Barry. However, the United States considers Barry, together with John Adams, to be the fathers of the United States Navy. Barry was a 21-year-old Philadelphia shipmaster from Ireland when the Revolutionary War broke out. He offered his services to the Continental Congress, which commissioned him as a captain and sent him to command the Brig Lexington. His sympathies were fully anti-British. He was Irish, after all. After the war, when Congress authorized the United States Navy, Barry was awarded the first commission ever granted by the service, Commission One, which President George Washington approved. He is the first commissioned officer in the U.S. Navy and the first flag officer with the rank Commodore. Despite this, he's largely forgotten by the rest of the world. Number four, Pierre Augustin Caron de Beaumarchais. Beaumarchais was a French playwright and philosopher who created the characters Figaro in three plays, The Marriage of Figaro, the Barber of Seville, and The Guilty Mother. He devised a novel mechanism that made clocks and watches much more precise. He was also the son of a modest watchmaker. When another watchmaker claimed Beaumarchais' invention, he defended it and gained widespread fame, as well as became a favorite of the French court. Beaumarchais had considerable economic interests in Spain and France by the time the American Revolution started. He used his connections to form Portales at Sai, a fictitious corporation that sent arms, clothing, and money to the insurgent Americans. Before France formally entered the Revolutionary War, Beaumarchais and his business partners spent their fortunes assisting the Americans. His heirs did not receive any money until 1837, and only partially. During the first three years of the war, the Continental Congress would not have been able to supply Washington's army without his efforts. Today, he's most known as the creator of Figaro, with his contributions to the United States relegated to a footnote in history. Number three, Daniel Bissell. George Washington's Continental Army camped around New York City in late summer 1781, while the main British army in North America was occupying the city. Following Benedict Arnold's betrayal, Washington became preoccupied with learning about the British plans and espionage operations. He enlisted the help of Daniel Bissell, a Connecticut line soldier, to masquerade as a deserter and enter the British lines of New York. If Bissell's ploy was discovered, he faced certain death by hanging. Bissell received the badge of military merit for his services as a soldier and a spy. The badge of military merit, the predecessor of today's Purple Heart, was the sole honor authorized for warriors during the American Revolution. It's the second oldest military honor in existence, having been designed by George Washington himself. Bissell passed away in 1824. He had Washington's confidence and served under him, his tombstone said of his service. Number two, Henry Dearborn. Dearborn's Revolutionary War duty began as a captain in John Stark's regiment, commanding a company of New Hampshire militia. He took part in Benedict Arnold's invasion of Canada through Maine's forest after fighting at Bunker Hill. One of the most magnificent military marches in history occurred during that invasion. Much of what we know about it today comes from Dearborn's writings chronicling the men's suffering. On New Year's Eve, 1775, during Arnold's assault on Quebec, 
He was seized by the British and held captive until May of the following year. His fame was such that Fort Dearborn, Detroit, Dearborn County in Indiana, and Fort Dearborn in Illinois were all named after him. His notoriety faded after his service of the War of 1812, which was less than outstanding, but respectable. He held many political positions, including minister to Portugal in the 1820s, but his accomplishments during the American Revolution were entirely forgotten by the mid-19th century. Number 1. William Alexander, Lord Sterling Even though he was born in New York and the son of a prominent lawyer and businessman, William Alexander claimed the extinct Scottish peerage of the Earldom of Stirling. His father had not claimed the title. William's claim was upheld in Scottish courts. The British House of Lords, however, rejected it. And the Americans recognized his title as Lord Stirling. His extravagant lifestyle, which he considered suitable for a peer, put him in debt, and when the Revolutionary War broke out, he raised and outfitted the 1st New Jersey Regiment on his own, further indebting himself. The regiment was one of the few American units to stand up to the British regulars during the American defeat at the Battle of Long Island. The regiment sustained tremendous losses, and the British seized him when Lord Sterling's forces were ultimately overrun. He was promoted to Major General after being exchanged, and he fought in the battles of Trenton, Brandywine, Germantown, Monmouth, and others. Washington so highly regarded him that he was given command of the men stationed around New York after the main army left for Virginia and Yorktown in 1781. These are the 10 Americans without whom America would not have been modern-day America. These men sacrificed a lot but stayed firm against the British and proved that you can achieve anything with great courage and devotion. What do you think about these forgotten heroes? Let us know in the comments section. That's all for today. If you found this video interesting, please give it a huge thumbs up. And don't forget to share the video with your friends and family. And thanks for watching.